Hello, everybody. Welcome to our second, um, our second first, first Friday, Friday chat. <laughs> <laughs> the perks from like working at home, right? Um, <laughs> and mom brain. Anyways, uh, for those of you who weren't able to join before or are joining now, um, we're so excited to have you here. Please make sure to comment um, in the chat to let us know that you are participating and that we know that you're watching. Um, we were able to obviously get Zoom to work. So um, hopefully this goes a little better than last month. But this conversation um, today, we're actually going to talk about various 3D softwares and um, which one might be best for interior designers. And just, we may even completely geek out about ones that you may not have heard of um, because we have some pretty awesome experts here who have background in more than just the typical interior design software. So, I will introduce myself again first. Um, hi, I am Kelly Fridline. I am the host of this group. Um, everyone else here, they're also moderators and administrators of the group, um, but I started it two years ago under a different name and now we are presentation by design. My formal background is I have a master of architecture and within my education, um, my formal education, I was taught um, Revit and AutoCAD, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't super geek out um, for 3D software in school. I actually spent a lot of the time concentrating on hand rendering. Um, so it wasn't until my fifth year and my master's thesis that I actually kind of concentrated on Revit and learning that and developing my rendering skills. Um, and I wasn't introduced to Chief Architect, which I think most people associate my name with now, um, until about five or six years ago when I worked for a design build company. And the owner of that company is actually part of this group. So, hey, Jason, you guys can give Jason Orlowski the thumbs up for introducing me to Chief Architect and eventually learning and being able to teach it to all of you. Um, but that is my background um, very quickly on 3D modeling software. I'm now going to go ahead and introduce you guys to Jody, um, which you guys have seen her tidbit Tuesdays, but I think this is the first time you guys are really seeing Jody um, on camera, right, Jody? Yeah, well, I, I don't know that I've ever done anything like this before. I've never participated in any sort of a, you know, broadcasted live anything. So hi, if I'm a little bit nervous, I apologize. Um, uh, I am a computer, bit of a computer geek. Um, I don't know a lot about like processing systems, but when it comes to the software, I love playing with new stuff. I love trying new things out. Um, I started off my career in college um, doing 3D animation and design. Um, I wanted to be working on um, you know, the Toy Story movies, and I loved Jurassic Park, and I loved doing all that kind of stuff. Um, it didn't really end up working out for me in that respect. You really have to go. I live in Maryland. Um, I went to the University of Maryland, Baltimore, Baltimore County, UMBC. Um, all my family's here, and, you know, most of the production companies um, are in California or in Austin, Texas. Um, I wasn't really willing to, you know, move myself all across the country for the chance that I might maybe get into the industry. So I ended up staying here um, and uh, eventually did a little bit of graphic design um, and then transitioned into the interior design world before I had kids. And then after um, my kids went back to school and I got back into the industry again, I started really going back into some of that um, 3D modeling and animation and stuff that I really loved when I was in college. It's a fun field and um, I really I really like playing with new stuff and learning new software and figuring things out. And I just get super excited when I get to, um, you know, geek out over that stuff and then make something that I didn't think I could do until I've done it. So it's exciting for me and that's my favorite. Tell them some of the software over the last, what, 15 or 20 years that you Yeah, so when I was in learned. school, um, we focused mostly on um, Alias Wavefront Maya, which, um, back then was and still is a very deep, very involved 
3D modeling and animation, there was a lot of, um, you know, scripting involved and you could make characters, you know, with, with skeletons and, and camera shots and all this, like all this cra crazy kind of stuff. Um, that was what I learned on. So that was, um, that would have been like nine, uh, I graduated in 2001. So it was like late nineties, early 2000s. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm kind of dating myself a little bit, but um. No, I think uh, that it's was, just adding to your yeah. So that was that was where I started. That was the programming that I started with, and of course, in school we learned Photoshop and a um, couple uh, and Illustrator and a couple other Adobe programs. Um, and nowadays, what I focus on is I do a lot of SketchUp. Um, I've also done used Blender. Um, I know 3D Studio. Like, I only touched 3D Studio Max for like a couple minutes really <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. But um, what I found is there's um, similarity to the, all the different programs and the way that they function, except for SketchUp, which I think maybe we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, it really gives you an ability to move around in 3D space, understand how um, hierarchies of groups work, um, you know, moving points and creating shapes and things like that. It's just one of those things that, um, is fairly similar among all the different programs. So um, yeah, my experience with, I, and I know I've told you this, but I'm a SCAD graduate. So they've got a huge animation and industrial design program and whatnot, where a lot of those software that you mentioned are kind of second, you know, like it's second nature to learn that. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and they're deep, you know, most of those programs are very deep and it takes a long time to learn um, you really have to, you know, get into the program's individualities and like what are the hot, some things you can only do with hotkeys and you have to know all the hotkeys in order to function on in it. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot, it's like Photoshop and I know, you know, Photoshop and I think Sonia, you know, Photoshop too. Um, Photoshop, you can do just simple, basic little things with Photoshop. But if you really want to in Photoshop, it's such a deep program, like you can go really far with it. Um, and really get really get involved in it. And um, most of the 3D modeling programs are also like that. They're very deep and you have to really spend some time to get into them um, to learn. Hey, Nancy, learn them. sorry, Nancy saying hi. <laughs> That's okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so, all right. So I'm sure we're gonna geek out more, but um, Sonia, introduce yourself and tell us a little about, about your background with 3D modeling software. Okay, hi everybody. Um, so I also graduated from design school and Kelly, you reminded me, I also started with hand renderings, which was so much fun. Um, also started hand drafting and then AutoCAD and Revit. And um, then transitioned to, well, AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp in school. And then it's just was using basically SketchUp for my renderings for a long time. Um, and then I made a list of everything I tried. <laughs> um, 2020, that was another one that I played around with a little oh, bit. Oh, I tried that yeah. too. Didn't yeah. like it. Like, all right, so when I try a program, if it's not intuitive, like Chief Architect, oh, like Revit, I hated it. It was so complicated, you know, to go from uh, a placement of an object to all the settings. It was just too complicated for me. And I feel like I pick up programs pretty quickly, but could not, could not get that one. So yeah, from um, SketchUp, I went on to try um, all these different plugins for, for SketchUp. So I tried Enscape years back when it wasn't as good as it is today. Um, I tried Twinmotion, Floor Planner, V-Ray, Lumion, <laughs> Kuhom, and of course, Chief Architect. So I, I, I've tried quite a bit, so, um, and obviously settled on Chief Architect and SketchUp primarily for now, and Kuhon for the final renders, but I'm learning Enscape, so <laughs> that's where I'm at. Yeah, I wish Maria was joining us, too. I, I know, she's so she's good. Really nerd out. Yeah, well, she'll comment on this in, like, <laughs> four hours. <laughs> <laughs> she's asleep. Um but yeah, so yeah, Sonia, you are somebody, you and Jody are probably like the two perfect people to have this conversation with, though, because you guys both 
100% nerd out on rendering or like it's not even rendering software it's, it's 3d software right so yeah. it's kind of funny that you said Sonia that Revit was so in depth for you because I actually re I have a very distinct memory of being introduced to chief architect and grumbling for the first year and be like this is so lame where are all the features because my experience was Revit so I I but because of that, I went into Chief expecting features, which made me look for them okay. versus people who start out, they have no expectations. So they're not looking for features that are going to save them time. That's, that's kind of how I felt with SketchUp because I had all this knowledge from these 3D modeling softwares. And then I went into SketchUp and I was like, I can't move a point. Where's the freaking point? I can't just grab a point and move it. I don't understand how you're supposed to do anything in this program. Um, there was a, there's a lot about SketchUp that is, as somebody that has experience in proper 3D modeling, SketchUp is very frustrating. Yeah. Um, it's like, there's so many things that just you can do without, you know, any sort of plugins or, you know, just the basics of a normal 3D modeling program. Um, that you can't necessarily do in the um, the base program of SketchUp. That's just not possible. Yeah. Um, you have to do plugins and add-ons and all these other things. But I will say, if you don't have experience with any 3D modeling, then SketchUp is a lot simpler to learn because you don't have to go so deep into all that other stuff. If you, all you want to do is draw the walls of your house and out and, you know, like extrude things and pop windows in and, you know, like that kind of stuff, that's so much easier to do in SketchUp because you don't have to learn all the other deep stuff that goes into most other modeling programs. Um, so, and I think that's the large majority of why you see it used in, um, the interior design industry so often because it's first of all it's cheap um and second of all it's very quick to learn the basics of it and you can get by with just the basics i think for the majority of jobs well, i think you do. i think it's also because it's been formally taught in design schools for a long time right and see like, i didn't go to school for interior design i was in you know graphic design and um 3D animation kind of a thing. I was, it was like a different field. So I don't know what um, most people experience as an interior designer and the programs that they learn as an interior designer. Um, I actually I mean, don't I, either. My background I've been, I mean, I've been working in the interior <laughs> design. I've been working in the interior design field for a, a long time, but I wasn't ever formally trained that way. So I don't. Um, right. Wait, Kelly, didn't you, they, they didn't teach you SketchUp when you went to school? So when I went to SCAD, you had to do, I think it was like five to seven electronic design electives, which I thought was standard. And it wasn't until I started working in, you know, at other architecture firms to realize that there's, there's full blown architecture schools that don't require a lot like electronic design courses, which to me, I'm like, how do how you can finish you, a like, five-year program without learning these? The right? hand draw everything? And they, but they weren't even taught that. Like, so when I worked at Finney, the, um, we actually had the ballot Victorian of the architecture program was hired and working at Finney Design Group. And she was self-taught in AutoCAD and she, I think she knew Revit, maybe it was SketchUp, but she actually didn't understand the concept of how to draw an elevation because she only knew how to model something and pull the shot. And to me, it's like to be an RPI graduate, which is a highly, highly esteemed architecture school and not know these basics because they didn't go over it blew my mind. Um, Cause that was, that was covered at SCAD from basically day one. Um, and I think that's where sometimes the fundamentals come in too. You can learn all these softwares, but if you don't know the fundamentals of design and things that have been implemented and used for hundreds, and I mean hundreds of years, then you're not getting the full depth of, of the tool because the software, it's still just a tool, right? So I am, before we get too far into this, I'm going to, I'm going to have Jackie introduce herself again and tell <laughs> Tell everyone why she's here and how she's going to kind of be 
the person who keeps us from going so far down into a rabbit hole that people who don't understand what we're talking about don't yeah. get lost. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely here, not as an outsider, but as somebody that absolutely does not use any 3D modeling software. Um, I'm here as a online business manager for interior designers, essentially. So I, um, I help interior designers with their processes decide, um, you know, take a look at their whole strategy, look, take a look at their whole business structure and just and help them decide on what other things to bring in that will help, you know, kind of streamline their business. So that goes from anything from, you know, different CRMs, different emailing, marketing, you know, processes, project management, but it also brings into, you know, who's doing the renderings in your business? Are you outsourcing? Are you, do you have somebody on your team? And what kind of programs um, do you need in your firm that make the most sense? Um, for, you know, I have an interior design client right now who has an engineer on staff and she uses chief architect. So we obviously with my experience with Kelly, we have a lot of talks about chief architect and how much it can do for you um, and that kind of thing. So um, just here as a standpoint to keep us online from an online business manager perspective of, you know, what's the biggest bang for your buck, what makes the most sense for the type of designer you are, interiors, exteriors, commercial, residential, that kind of thing, um, ease of learning. I can kind of answer that myself because all of these ladies here offer one-on-one -on -one training for all the services, for all the softwares they're going to be talking about. So ease of learning is kind of easy here with VDM mentors. So um, yeah, a little bit about me and why I'm part of this conversation. <laughs> Becky, I don't, I don't know if it's yours, but for some reason we were getting like weird feedback. I just had a helicopter like buzz my house. Okay, oh. it was Jody. Is it, is it gone now? <laughs> I should have muted while, while that way. I was like, what is going on out there? Maybe well, that was, you know, that. I'm surprised we're, you know, you know that Jackie's nowhere near like the actual army base because when we lived in Belton I wouldn't be surprised like there were days that we would get the artillery like the test fire and we were right near a lake so like our whole house would shake and you could hear the boom oh and you would think God. something was like lit I mean something literally you know that happens here there. it just depends on the time of year when they're doing their trainings but we get helicopters constantly because there's a lot of all that Boy, how do your dogs react to that kind of noise I just they, thought of my they, dog. Yeah, you said they would just lie there. Like every so often they'd bark at it, but it was just kind of like, all right, well, the house didn't fall down. So, hey, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I love how my husband walks in through here, like right as I'm doing this. <laughs> Joys of working from home, so huh, I'm guys? Don't talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just did. I was like, oh, no, go away. <laughs> That's what I said to my husband. It's, it's going to be one o'clock. Please don't say anything because he he talks to himself a lot. So he walks around the house and talks loud. I'm like, I can hear you. Like, I don't have any doors. So he went in the in his man cave today. That's awesome. But um, all right, now we're going to do it out. <laughs> so, all right. So software. So if we were to um, talk about 3D modeling software, right? And not just modeling, right? But the different features that are available for it and how they might impact not just the interior design industry, but let's say that we have virtual design assistants and rendering artists and people like that who are watching this as well. And they're maybe trying to figure out the software because I'm gonna be honest, I just had two discovery calls this week with people who are aspiring to learn software and they want to provide services to interior designers. So <clears throat> what software are we recommending based off of the services and the end results that these designers or service providers are looking to provide, right? So, um, so I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say because you know a lot more software than I do. And I'll be honest, and I, I'm honest with this all the time, when it comes to SketchUp, I have it to essentially pick furniture, explode it, and delete the shit I don't want in it, and then I export it. Like, I don't. I, it's a I good don't use know. for it too. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good I use. Really, honestly, I really don't know SketchUp. They did teach it in school, but I actually remember seeing people working in it and being like, "It looks like a cartoon." I'm not. I'm not going to learn a cartoon software. Um, and now I'm like, it'd be great to learn, but do I have time to learn it? No. So I'm now that person who's like. The stuff I need to have done in SketchUp, I will send it to other people and I will do the stuff I know 
And you guys, anyone who's watching, like, that's not what I'm saying. So even the people who are outsourced, outsource. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get a lot. I get a lot of outsourcers outsourcing to me. Actually, I'm like, <laughs> so I'm I'm like three times removed from the final product. Like, there's the client, and then there's the designer, and then there's the person they're outsourcing to, and then there's me who's being outsourced by the assistant, the person that's doing the outsource. So I'm like, so who am I actually giving this paperwork to when I'm? <laughs> a lot of times, I feel like, you know, this is a lot of a lot of middle management going on here, but um, a lot of telephone. Yeah. 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 Can you get, I have a question about how this wall is supposed to be. Okay. Let me talk to the designer. The designer has to talk to the client and the client has to talk back, you know, like, you know, it's like to get an answer on something, but that's, you know, that's not the point here anyway. But Sonia, I think that you have been actually using SketchUp the longest because I've only been really honestly using it for about a year and a half, maybe two years. But it's like you've been using it forever. I mean, you're. But so that's because at. I'm a geek. <laughs> I'm a nerd, and I and I like, I, I uh, obsess about something, and I get like totally like Kelly said, I get sucked into a rabbit hole, and I'm like, what else can I do? What else can I? And so I like totally like. But I think you've been using it longer than I have. So. Um, yeah, well, I don't. We, we just. I think the rabbit that. holes. I hate to talk over you, okay, but I think the rabbit holes are typical. I think it's kind of like, um, this is going to show my age, but it's kind of like playing Sims. I don't know who here yes, has oh ever gosh. played Sims. But <laughs> go to the bathroom, little guy. Go to the bathroom. I literally, <laughs> go to bed. I, it's, yeah, sometimes I'll design. I'm like, I wonder what my score would be in my Sims house based off of yeah. my design and how, like, how yeah. easy it is for them to walk around. But it is, it's like, you know, I remember playing Sim so often that I would like hit, I would be thinking, I would start hitting space bar in my brain being like, can I just fast forward through this? Like, but I, I think that design software, anybody who finds that they love it, they habitually, it's, it's not work, you play in it, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all play. It's all play. So like, yeah, so I, I might have put in more hours just because I obsess about things, but I think from a design standpoint that um, I haven't honestly not been using it that long. Um, basically pandemic, you know, my, I got sent home from my job and I was sitting at home for, you know, hours and hours at a time with nothing to do. And so that's kind of, I was like, why don't I try doing this? <laughs> um, and that's like really when I, I mean, I used it a little bit when I did my own um, at home project when it, I was using a free version of it, but um, I don't know, like my, my point is to ask Sonia, like how did you get yeah, into Sonia. using SketchUp and like, why did you pick that one over or do you use it in combination with other programs? Well, yeah, um, started it in school and um, it just kind of evolved. I never stopped using it. And I, I felt I was so good at it, you know, but I wasn't modeling furniture um until right um when was it I don't even remember you know time is so going fast um when um uh, what's her name I'm not gonna remember <laughs> never mind she sent an email out I can't remember her name right now but she said who does models and I was like yeah I want to learn so I kind of picked up um hired uh, Sam at that time um, so he taught me the, all the basics and then I reached the limit and then I did the same thing like you, Jody. I, I couldn't model a sofa. It was all these curves and up and down. And I'm like, yeah, the lines won't bend. How do I move it forward? It's not yeah. working. And I spent so many hours in trying to figure out which plugin is the best. I couldn't, could not get it. And then you taught me the quad face modeling and I was yeah, like, yeah. wow. So, <laughs> yeah, and I started well. with SketchUp. Honestly, I started with SketchUp um, through eDesign Tribe. I did a class with Sarah. Sarah, her name is Sarah. Sarah. Okay. And, um, you know, being the nerd that I am, I got into her class and I already knew everything because I taught it to myself. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, yeah, but how about if you did it this way, or this if would be a better way to do it? Or... First grade, right? Yeah, right. I was, I was, uh, you know, like, I had, I had spent so much time with it before I even 
you know, I signed up for the class and I was so excited to do this class that I spent so much time like looking, watching YouTube videos and teaching it to myself that by the time I got into the class, I really, you know, it was like a week or something. And I had already taught myself most of what she, um, you know, they were doing in that class. And so I was like, oh, okay, so let's just keep going and see how far I can push this. And, um, you know, that's just the obsessive nature of my and artwork that, that I do, really. I think there's course addicts. I think there's people who get addicted to courses and yeah. addicted to signing up for stuff and they don't really realize like, I, I wouldn't put my, well, I wouldn't put myself no, in I wouldn't that, put that, that there, category, but, but a... because it doesn't, it's not necessarily just with the computer stuff either. Cause I'm an artist as well. I do, you know, oh, I draw yeah, and are. I, I spent a whole lot of time. Like I got into this, like this um phase where I was like making paper boxes <laughs> you know like you get the cardstock and you cut it and you fold it and you make a cute little um mm -hmm. you know like gift box or something like that and I have a whole room full of like little tiny little boxes that I'm like what am I going to do with all this stuff and <laughs> then I you know you know, greeting cards I don't even oh, buy greeting I cards did, like I don't pay I for greeting what? cards and I was making greeting cards <laughs> out the wazoo and I yeah, did so wedding just, invitations and now I, yeah. now I feel like I could build an entire company based off of like wedding invitation consulting like how do you yeah. actually like what's the etiquette of titling an envelope because I freaking know it and yeah. it's insane it's just an obsessive sort of learning a new like I just love I learning think, new things and especially if it's creative I'm just like it's totally I think it's just it. an artist in us like I keep seeing online those cookies they're making those cookies I'm like oh I really want to do those pretty cookies you know they kind of paint them and stuff and like all the things and I've tried all some, you know, I think it's just an artist in you where you just want to create with your hands and you see yeah. things. And I was doing this um, bracelet by hand and, you know, paintings and all kinds of things just to, to get your creative creativity out. And yeah. um, have we don't, none of, I mean, I don't have as much, well, no time for that. <laughs> so I'm just going, kind of focusing on SketchUp and Chief and whatever else I'm doing right now. And trying to master fewer things, you know? All right, so if we were, Jackie, go ahead, you ask the question. Okay, coming back full circle, back to SketchUp. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody that might want to learn SketchUp over another program, what are the perks of SketchUp? What can you do with it? We know 3D modeling, um, in a sense, with different plugins sounds like um full room rendering interior exterior what are the perks of sketchup other than it being the most it sounds like the most affordable it is definitely the most affordable like i don't think you can to get the pro version of sketchup it's like 299 maybe maybe they changed it i don't know when i purchased it it was 299 but there's also um, a free version there's right? a free version but it's very limited limited okay. um, the free version yeah. you're technically if you read their notes you're not supposed to use it for, for professional purposes. Good so that's and, on, that and you can't, you know, like the free version, I don't know, maybe you can import it something and then explode it and take out the things you that can. you want. And then, you know, like maybe it's you can pain, do that yeah. with the free version. But if you want to be creating, um, especially if you're doing it in a business sense and you want to, um, you know, be creating anything that you could use in a document or, and, you know, like part of one of the thing of things about SketchUp Pro that I really like is the, um, the layout program that goes with it. It's companion program. I personally, I think it's great. I think it does a good job. It's a little, you know, like you have to figure it out a little bit. Um, there's a couple weird little tricky things about it, but the program has some weird tricky things about it. So um, I, I like what I like about SketchUp versus like something like um, Home Designer Pro or Chief Architect or something like that is it's really more of a drawing program. And so whatever I can think of or see or need to make, I can do it. It's completely open-ended where, um, you know, like if you're in Chief Architect or if you're in Home Designer or any of the other like room drawing programs um you can draw your rooms and your walls according to that program's rules you know if you have vaulted ceilings and dormer windows and you know like half walls and i had such a hard time figuring out how to do some of that stuff um 
in those programs. When I think in my head, all I have to do is draw what I see in SketchUp and it's there. I don't have to like make it work. Um, that to me is, you know, it might not be as fast. I think if you're gonna use Chief Architect, you just pick the wall tool and you draw your wall, draw your wall, draw your wall, draw your wall, pop your windows in, pop, you know, like that's a lot faster. It's a lot quicker. Um, it's, I don't know if it's more accurate, but it's, it, but it also gives you all that other information like the, um, you know, the wall studs and the, you know, you can calculate all these things. And I think the mindset are, is, are you going in as an artist and a sculptor? Or are you going in as a, and it depends like, on, yeah, it depends on what you need from right. the program as well. And, and for my purposes, most of the time, I don't need that other stuff. And because I know SketchUp so well, it's faster for me to draw the walls and pop in the windows um, in SketchUp than it is sometimes to do it in, in one of those programs. But those programs are much more efficient at doing that stuff, in my opinion. But you I, can't customize things as much. So that's I think where it depends on what your business is like and what do you do for, um, as for me, a full-time job is drafting and rendering. So if I was just a designer looking to quickly plug in the furniture, maybe SketchUp would be easier. You can pull elevation and sections in SketchUp also, and you can send it to layout. I hate it, I'll be honest. <laughs> I can't stand it and I just don't use it because I don't think it's as accurate. So, but if you are doing it like um, a virtual assistant to designers for drafting, then I would say then use Chief because it's, it just has for that part of the job, construction documentation, I think it's faster. And um, just because like when I get a client and I do a kitchen within one to two hours, people are like, wow, that's really fast. And it's like, yeah, because it's on me, <laughs> it's the program. Right, and also, you know? you know, when you have something like Chief Architect, you've got this library of cattle of items that already exist, you know, like you don't have to go searching for things. So if you need a 36 inch base cabinet, you just, you know, plop it in and, and it's there and you don't have to think about you know, for the most <laughs> not quite. Am I wrong <laughs> about that? But I, like, that's my impression is that, you know, oh, I need a sofa that's, you know, 86 inches wide. I just go and I pick, if I just need it to plop into a floor plan or something, a placement, something okay, to put yeah. there, um, it's a lot faster. But if you're talking about making, um, realistic and um, beautiful end images, you know, like renders or elevations or, you know, like whatever it is you're doing. I don't have as much experience in using the chief architect to do that because, because I know the other 3D modeling system so well, I tend to rely on those. And well, I think me, the thing to keep faster. in mind is chief is really made for just chief. Right. So you have the ability to export models from chief architect and even home designer, but those models actually generally need to be converted or brought in in many cases to SketchUp to be able to use these other rendering softwares. I think the only one that I've run across that really works without having to convert it to a SketchUp model is actually twin motion that you can actually export it as a, I think a DAE and import it into twin motion and interact with it. And you can still reassign the materials if you want to, um, but you can stage it. You can do all those sorts of things with it without having to go through the extra SketchUp stuff that you have to do with some of this other software options. Um, but again, I'm not super fluent in SketchUp. I think that Sonia is probably the better person because she knows all of these very fluently as well. Um, but when it comes to doing technical drawings, um, I think that I personally, obviously I'm gonna push Chief Architect even more so than like AutoCAD or I think that when it comes to Revit, um, I have a lot of designers that reach out and they're like, should I do Revit? If you're primarily residential and you don't work with really big teams, then chief architect is going to be great. Even if you work with an architect who works in Revit, an architect is not going to use your drawings, period. They're just not. They're going to use their own measurements because they have a lot more liability than you do. So you can send them your models, but it's not going to make a difference. They're not going to use it. 
Um, but when it comes to the ease, I think that that I think that Sonia would be a great person to like jump in at this point because I'm just doing you it have, based yeah, off of what everyone else has said. Yeah, and Sonia, you have good experience in using both of those programs, like. Yeah, really in well, AutoCAD. You know? I still use AutoCAD on occasion, but not for drafting, just to, um, you know, you get a model from somebody and you have, the model comes in at, you know, 400 feet wide and it's supposed to be like three feet. So you have to rescale it. So I, I do use that, but yeah, chief architect, hands down. Anybody that reaches out to me, I'm like, you have to try chief architect because it is um, with everything that, that I've tried and I I find it really easy to learn. It does take time to do, like you can't expect to know it uh, unless you do it. Practice mm -hmm. makes perfect, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. But even with that, I still go to SketchUp and I build my own specific legs or knobs or whatever else I need to show that I can't really do in Chief. But yeah, Chief hands down, like I'm such a fan. <laughs> I should be a spokesperson. Well, and that's actually the reason why anyone who purchases our chief architect bundle actually gets Sonia's courses because it's a constant question of, well, I need better stuff. And, you know, one it? of the things that you find is that there isn't really one program that does everything you yeah. want. There really isn't. And you really don't want there to be because if there was one program that did absolutely everything you wanted it to do, it would be such a heavy program. It would be so hard to learn. It would be so hard to use. Um, I mean, it's the same like you, you know, yeah, you use, it's, you use your, you, you build your, your room in the program that you want. You use SketchUp to add in whatever details you need. Um, maybe you're creating a render with, you know, twin motion or some other exterior program. And then you're taking the render into Photoshop and you're touching it up and, you know, like there isn't just one system where you do it all in one place but wow. the thing about chief you know i know i think me and kelly were huge fans of it obviously <laughs> but i tell everybody chief is a combination of check uh, of sketchup autocad and um just a basic drafting it's like three programs and a rendering program three programs in one and it really does majority i'll say rarely do I go out of the program other than doing those super high photorealistic renders or building a specific ledge or something that I can't really do. And it comes with a nice hefty, what, $2,000? Yeah, but what version you want? I guess, <laughs> I mean, I have, I yeah. have Home Designer Pro, which I own, uh, you know, like I was using the base, base, base model this past the year before. And this year I upgraded to the Pro version of Home Designer, which is like $300, um, you know, and being my own business and it's really just a part-time business for me because I have another part-time job and I have two active kids that are running around all over the place. So, you know, for me to spend $2,000 on a program like Chief Architect doesn't right. financially make sense, especially because I'm not, you know, getting requests from my clients to use that, you know, like, most of the people that I come in contact with that are looking for help are always sending me SketchUp files. Well, you're like, niching I, into something different though. Yeah, I so. I think that's the difference. Yeah, so. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So as an interior designer, if I'm looking between, you know, a chief architect and a SketchUp, I'm, we're just gonna go with those two at the moment. I know there's, there's a million other ones, but um, if I'm looking for a chief architect, it's because I not only want renderings, but I wanna be able to do it all in one program with layout files and be able to have construction documents and this, all this kind of stuff while only building it once and not have to like rebuild a bunch of things versus a SketchUp, it sounds like you're gonna build it as more of a drawing and a beautiful rendering, but to do it in a layout, you're exporting it. Is that what I was understanding? Yes, yes. I mean, technically you are your export because SketchUp functions as an independent program from its companion, which is a layout program. Okay. Um, La the layout That's program the imports the SketchUp files into them so that you can do things like elevations and draft, um, you know. So you can still, uh, ultimately you can still, you can do, you, right, right. But, um, and I think a lot of it too depends what your business is. If you're an interior designer and you're doing these, pro these this work, then something like Chief Architect is probably 
better for you. But if you're only doing it occasionally and you're not always needing the exact same things, then sometimes SketchUp will fit that niche without having to. By the exact same things, do you mean the product items or do you mean measurements or? What? The measurement, if you need, I mean, like you can do all that in SketchUp. You can put measurements together. You can, um, you know, create a document that shows the dimensions of everything and the locations of things and, you know, but it's not going to do things like it's not going to give you um, a call out list of all the windows in your in your file and it's not going to tell you what the square footage of your, you know, wall space is or, um, you know, how many how many two by fours you need in your construction documents oh, yeah. or, you know, like that kind of stuff. So chief, comprehensive for building. Yeah, a chief architect does all that. And if that's what you need, then then you need to use a program like that. What well, can I just okay. say? So for a full design with maybe some, you know, full renovations where we're knocking out walls or we're doing a full build or that kind of thing, you want to look more into a chief architect or I would know, think so, yeah. Pro do some of these things. Well, also, Pro is going to give you a lesser price tag as well. I think versus you if you're going to do more of a, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> versus more of a, just a, a lighter design, a designer for a day, if you will, where you're, you know, picking out new paint colors, new furniture, new uh, thing, you're not knocking out windows or changing anything big, where we could do a beautiful rendering in SketchUp to give your client the end all, like, here's the look of, of the little changes that we're doing, nothing super structural, it sounds like. And SketchUp is good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I here's throw... here's what I generally when I have these discussions with uh, with designers who are trying to figure out what what they need. That's an immediate conversation, right? What are you doing right now? <clears throat> but as we've discussed, this is still an investment, and when you're still starting a company, even that two ninety nine seems a, like a yeah. huge. It's a chunk, right? Yeah. And I remember when I first bought SketchUp after while I was still paying for Chief Architect, being like. And that was when you had to pay for it. They didn't have the subscription yet. And I remember thinking, oh my God, $500. Like, how can I afford $500 on top of like, I, I, I had my bookkeeper at the time and I was paying for Nancy and like, how can I do this? And then eventually I was like, well, because I'm spending a stupid amount of time trying to find that damn thing and sketch up free and then figure out how to explode it and delete it. Yeah. And so I was able to rationalize that. But when it comes to, for me, when I'm having those conversations, with designers or virtual design assistants that are trying to figure it out, I immediately say, what is your goal as a business right now? So are you right now just doing kind of soft furnishings and you eventually want to take on, you know, especially if they haven't been working in any software before, right? And they eventually want to do kitchens and baths and do renovations and do those sorts of things. And if that is their end goal, then I will generally direct them to Home Designer Pro. And I will say, if you want to be able to do more detailed yeah. renderings and you want to build your own furniture, you will eventually want to um, invest in SketchUp. But to start out, Home Designer Pro is a great way to start because you're getting your foot in that more complicated. And it's a lot less expensive than it's the investment of the chief less expensive. And you can use that $500 towards your upgrade of whether you're get upgrading to interiors or you're upgrading to chief architect. And... Um, while both of them, again, are super, are significantly more expensive than SketchUp, I remember having a conversation with Sarah years ago, and we were showing each other the software. And I, I remember just going over cabinets and how to build the cabinets, which Chief Architect and like 2020, that's a whole other conversation. But when it comes to SketchUp, I remember I her saying that she had to manually apply each piece of hardware to each box and that doing an entire kitchen that way can take a lot of time versus chief architect and home designer you can set that default up immediately or they already have hardware assigned and if you want to change it without it being crazy all you have to do is go to your library hover it over the box and boom it's immediately there and you can do it for the entire room yeah, it's so much faster, Chief Architect. I And also on top of it, if like you mentioned, if you're into doing a lot of kitchens and bathrooms, Chief Architect versus SketchUp, yeah. 100%. Yeah, one thinking, of the things in SketchUp that is frustrating is that, um, you know, it doesn't have that existing library. Of course, there are plugins that you can use to 
generate things like windows and special, you know, specifying the type of window that you're putting in, whether it's a double hung or, you know, it's a casement and it's got two lights or it's got all these things to it. If it's got trim, you know, like you can set that up in, in Home Designer or Chief and it just that it just does it automatically. In SketchUp, you actually have to build a window or well, you I have think... to find a window and you have to import it and, you know, make it fit into your situation. And if you've got seven different windows in your house and every window is, you know, like a little bit different than the next one, then each one of those things has to be recreated. So it just, it really depends on, you know, what your end goal is really. I did want to also um, maybe real quick, well, if we still got time, talk about we some of time. the web, talk about some of the web-based systems Go that ahead. are out there. Yeah, do you it. know, um, I have experienced, I've only used Kuhome, but I know that there's the, there's Kuhome, there's Foyer, there's, um, is it Room Styler? Oh, floor, um, planner. floor planner. Yeah, there's like three or four of them out there where um, they function as a basic room building system. You draw your walls, it's got, you know, it does that automatically till the wall height and then you select from the windows that are available in their library and you pop them in where they go. And then they've got a catalog of furniture and you drop the furniture, you know, like you just drag and drop things into it. It's, it doesn't allow you to do a lot of the like super custom things that I think you can do in chief architect or something like that. But then what is good about these systems is that they're all the renderings that come out of them are really high quality and they're all web-based so you don't have to have any kind of special computer system you don't have to upgrade your system so that it can process a render in seven hours or something like that you know um it's all done remotely using external processors and it's fast um and you just have to have decent just make sure you have decent internet though yeah you have to have really good you have to have good <laughs> internet to use them um and most of them i think our the programming is all written in China. So the people building the programs don't necessarily speak English and don't think like an American, you know, like our, our processing in the way that we build things and do things is very different from, I think, a lot of the Eastern continent where their processes are very different. And so, I found that I had a lot of difficult, even though like it's super fast and easy and quick to create and um, see an end result in those systems, I wanted to customize things. I wanted to put my own specific fabric on this specific chair and make it look good. And I couldn't do that because I couldn't understand I couldn't understand the system that they had put together and it was convoluted and confusing to me. Just, I think on a lot of it is the language barrier more than anything else. Um, but, you know, that's but I remember, um, so I haven't worked in Kuhome too much, but I remember um, there's a proprietary version of it. And I remember when I was first working within that version and there are some insanely beautiful renderings that come out of it. And if yeah, I have I mean, a designer that reaches out and says, can I, should I work within that? I'm like, if you're doing soft furnishings and you really want to do beautiful renderings, you're not, you're not going to miss out on anything by working within that. That being said, like you said, <clears throat> Jody, the way that they have it organized and the way they have things labeled is almost nonsensical to me. And there are too yeah, many times like, that I've seen like there was, there was, there was one rubs. system where I was trying to put in a fabric and my options were cotton flannel, carpet. cotton flannel carpet or um, flax. And I was like, okay, like where, where does my, where does my linen print go? You know, like it doesn't fit into any of these categories. And it was because the naming system, like it, what is flannel? Like, and flannel was just the word that they used to represent something else. It didn't really mean flannel. It was like flannel. the bump that was, is how they set up their bump and yeah, textures. Yeah, and, like so it was, and and the other issue that I always had with, with, those, with that one system, I'll say, because they haven't used the other ones, but that one system was that um, making changes to the materials was god awful. Like you had to import the material 
and then you had to test it and see if it worked. And if it didn't work, then you had to import it again with different settings. But the settings originally that you used, it doesn't record that. So if you didn't remember how you had imported it the first time, like the process of doing that was so, so difficult. Um, we, I will press it with that, that I don't think anyone but if you don't need to do that working within that version. So yeah, there may have been updates and changes to that. This is just our experience from 18. Yeah. Years and, ago. and again, if you don't need that customization, if you're not right. interested in, you know, focusing on like, if, if you're not going to be doing close up shots of a sofa, then that doesn't really matter, you know, to you. So it really just depends. And I'm personally, I'm detail oriented when it comes to things like that. And it drove me absolutely crazy that I couldn't change those things. Um, but overall, it was fast, it was easy, it was, um, you know, inexpensive because you're, what is it like to do Kahoom? It's like something like, to do the professional I think it's like, thing. yeah, something I think it's like, like not even $30 like a month. Yeah, like maybe $35 a month. So you could do it for a month and then not do it for a month and then do it, for, you know, like only when you needed to. I think, you know, when you're doing your renderings and draftings, I think it's important to definitely explore different things try a trial version yeah of things, but like you said there's not one program that does everything you know for me i still use autocad photoshop chief architect and sketchup and an outdoor program constantly so while i do chief mostly 90 percent, i'll still go to other things so i think it's good to know more i, I think you're better off knowing more than less and then just try to figure out what fits into each client or project better you know at least that's how i work i think the key too is to remember that no matter what the end result is <clears throat> whatever your style is and what you're trying to sell they're still abstract right so they're not the real thing and the end goal is to be able yeah. to get your design to the real thing so whether you're doing some beautiful hand renderings, like um, I'm gonna do a call out, but Amy Arm Armchalt, I think that's how I pronounce her name. She does like the most beautiful hand renderings um, and that sells your project and you're just doing, you know, some quick orders and um, furniture layout all the way down to full construction drawings with super detailed millwork drawings and highly detailed and fully rendered um, presentations. Again, it depends on your clients. It depends on your business and it depends on <clears throat> basically if you're charging for it, because everyone should be charging for all of their work. Um, and I think most of us who are rendering artists are hoping that their designers are probably upcharging our fee and making money off of working with us as well and not just charging what they paid for us because we've put a lot of love into it for you. So um, <clears throat> I think this has been a great conversation, guys. Like, I think it's answered a ton of questions too. Even even just, I feel like we could probably talk for another three hours, just sketch up and chief architect and home designer. <laughs> um, but I think that like the main things that I think most people who are trying to decide between SketchUp and chief architect have a lot of times been answered. And before we, shut down because I think that's kind of what's been tailored towards in some cases. If, if you could only have three software, if you could only pick three of your current that you use, and it doesn't have to be anything that we even mentioned, what are the three software that you, is it softwares or is it software? Like sometimes I'm like, I don't know which one I'm supposed to use. Um, which, what would you pick and why? Jody, go first. Um, I guess obviously SketchUp would be my first. Um, why? Why? Because it's so open-ended. I can do anything that I want in it. Um, I can do anything from just a floor plan all the way up to a custom tufted sofa. Um, you know, obviously I have to do some extra plugins or whatever to go with it, but I have that ability to do that. And I like the, I like the layout program that comes with it. I think it, for the most part, um, accomplishes anything that I would need to do in that situation. Um, my second would probably be, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, 
lie a little bit here and say Photoshop because I don't actually use Photoshop, believe it or not. I use a Mac version of Photoshop called Pixelmator that does like 80% of what Photoshop does. And But I use that a lot for creating just straight up graphics. You know, I need to make a flyer for something or I need to change the color on something or I need to cut the background out of something. I use that that program a lot and it's comparable to Photoshop. So I just say Photoshop. Um, and my third, I guess, for right now would probably want to be one of the, um, the web-based systems like Kuhome. I don't personally get a lot of business to use Home Designer. I purchased it and I know it, um, but from my end, I don't have a lot of clients that ask me to create anything with it. So, and it's just on my clientele is different, I think, than Sonia's clientele. So, me, it's like for um, what you yeah. are specializing in, you really can't yeah. do any of what you need to in Home yeah. Designer. Yeah. Like, I, I like to do the other things that are more than just the floor plans. I like doing the floor plans and building the rooms in the houses. I like doing that, but I like the ability to do more than that. So I honestly um, think that if you were to buy Chief Architect Premier, you'd geek out in it more than I think you think you would. I probably would. I probably would. I just don't have at the moment a uh, reason for it. Right. I'm sure I would love it. You know, and it's just the price tag on it doesn't allow me to, um, you know, <laughs> indulge in that particular desire of mine. So maybe if you want to let people know, because the price tag is being brought up, you can lease Chief Architect and Home Design. I did. Yeah. So, you so you if go. you can make yeah. up to two hundred dollars a month, you can pay for that high end yeah. subscription. Yeah. So, um, but that's just me. I know way too much about this software. So, okay, Sonia, what what are your thoughts? Three. Well, you get three. I'm going to shock you with this one for sure, Chief for sure. <laughs> But you know, like I think I think financially a little bit differently um, because I wanted to just focus on being a virtual assistant doing drafting. For me, the the old saying you can't make money without spending money. So I feel like spending money on I don't disagree architect, with that at all. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely yeah. a true statement. Spending money, investing with Kelly, you know, that scared me to like, oh my God, I have to spend X amount of money. And, and if I that. felt like I had the clientele that wanted to, but me to do that work, then I would definitely oh, wait, invest in it. You but, will yeah. get it once you start working in it, then, then your offerings are like, for me, I can offer AutoCAD, Chief Architect, Photoshop, SketchUp, what else, you know, all these things and you expand your client base. And then you can start new, you know, niche out to what you really want. But it's, I think, why, you know, casting a wider net. Okay, and so you have cheap architect, cheap obvious. SketchUp and, I don't know, a rendering program, I would say. So, a anyone. rendering program. Kuhom right now, I, I think it still gives the best without really testing Enscape. But yeah. I'm hoping. And I just started, I just started using V-Ray. Um, which I love, <laughs> but it, it's definitely not the simplicity of Kuhome. It's like, and it's part of the reason why I like it because it's so, complicated. again, it's deep and it's customizable and I can change things and see the changes that I'm making without having to fumble around in the dark about what's going on. But um, yeah, I am really liking V-Ray as a rendering. What about you, Kelly? Software. What are your but... top three? For me, I think everyone knows I'm going to say chief architect. Um, and that's just because for me, most of, um, I'm not doing as many renderings as I used to, but I think that even if I did, did, I've actually, I feel like I've built a decent style in Chief Architect that people have associated with my name. So while they may not necessarily be the most hyper-realistic renderings, I feel like for some reason, there's something that's bringing people. And I, I, I love their new rendering engine. So that again, anyone who wants to use that, um, you do need to, um, like Jody pointed out, you do need to have a pretty powerful computer though. Um, there's, there are quite a few times, it's probably more often than not that I actually get on training sessions with the designers and I have to make the unfortunate um, 
you know, diagnosis that they need to buy a computer before we continue that training session. So if you have questions and you want to book training with, I would say any of us on Design Mentor and it's for a specific um, pro uh, project or software, reach out to any of us if you want to before you book. Um, and we are going to tell you whether your computer can handle it. <laughs> so, um, but because uh, there's nothing worse than getting on Zoom and your computer just spinning the whole time. Yeah. Um, because it happens. Um, that and so for me, the other two would be Photoshop. And I'll be honest, I don't use Photoshop anywhere near to the level that you can, but the full version of Photoshop um has is the only place that has the features that I use. Um, so for me, it would be Photoshop. And then the third, which will 100% make you laugh, would be SketchUp. Um, I don't know how to use it other than explode shit, but I explode a lot of stuff in it. So to me, it's I, I would have it. And it also, SketchUp also opens the door for me to be able to use some of this other rendering software if and when I do want to use it. So. Um, I was looking at Thea because I know that Maria and Renee Rabbit. I couldn't are get Thea to download on my computer. I tried it. I tried oh, to really? download it. And, yeah, I don't know what. <clears throat> I have Did a Mac. I'm a, I'm a, I'm on, a, I'm a Mac chick. I, you know, like I love my Mac stuff. Um, I've had people try to talk me into getting a PC several times. And I've just, I can't, like it's an emotional situation for me, but um, <laughs> oh, I get it. it's restrict. It's a little <laughs> restrictive because there are just a lot of programs out there that don't work on Mac, but I tried to download. You can't Thea even, yeah, you can't even use parallels with them either. Yeah. Um, I tried to download Thea because I wanted to try it out and I, I couldn't even get it to like load on my computer. So I don't, it, even though it's, there's a Mac version of it, I tried, it just, I don't know, it didn't work. So I'm onto V-Ray for now. So we'll see how that works out for me. <laughs> well, maybe you so. can totally geek out and bring it into Maya. Yeah. Oh no, I can't afford Maya. <laughs> <laughs> Maya is again one of those like two thousand dollars just to get into the base level of it. So oh really? They don't I thought like Autodesk does a lot of subscriptions. Uh now. well they might do a subscription now, but um yeah, I just I use I like Blender. Blender is a freeware, which is amazing. Um when I think of Blender, so. and I think I've told you this before. When I think of Blender, I had a professor, I think my sophomore year of school who wanted us to try the 3D printers. And guys, this is when 3D printers were still like, oh my gosh, you could do this. <laughs> and he wanted us to model it in Blender. And this was my experience of Blender and Maya. And at the time I was seeing this kid who was an animation major, that's God. Yeah. Um, so he was, he was very pale. He never saw sunlight, you know, like, <laughs> but- It was like that, actually, I'm still like that, but you know. <laughs> No, I mean like the the building at SCAD for animation yeah. students, there's no windows in it. I'm no, sure there no, is, but they're no, covered. No, no um, there's no windows. If they're dark, the rooms are dark. They keep the lights off because you want to be able to see your monitor. Oh, I remember yeah. being so jealous. Those kids are like, they're such hermits that I stopped Scott being able to wear contacts own, that year yeah, because, they got their I, because own I totally screwed my eyes. In yeah. the building with like pizza in it. And I was like, what? So, anyway, go. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But he sewed it together in Maya instead. And I just remember watching this and being like, thank God I don't have to wear this. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, all right, I mean, Jackie. Blender, if anybody's interested in learning um, or trying out like a proper 3D modeling program, Blender is free. It's awesome. Um, it is downloadable for both Mac and PC. So if it's something that you're interested in wanting to learn and you want to see it in comparison to SketchUp, it's good to try them both and see what you like. The problem I had with Blender was that when I was trying to work with interior designers, you couldn't export from Blender into a file that somebody in SketchUp was using. Like they don't yeah. talk to each other. And so I ended up getting really frustrated because there was no way for somebody in SketchUp to take something that I was using in Blender and be able to, you have to convert the file in some fashion. And the, I now know a way to do that. I know how to do that properly, but the people that I was trying to help didn't have that ability. And so I ended up switching to SketchUp. Um, but again, somebody from a 3D modeling background, SketchUp is funky and weird and it, it's strange. But if you've never used that system, then it's easier so um, to do SketchUp. But if you want to learn a proper 3D modeling program, 
Um, Blender is awesome. It's free. It's like, it's unbelievable that it's free because it's, a, it's an amazing program. Here's um, the extra so. kick too. Jody is a mentor and the virtual design mentor as an advanced modeling trainer. And she can train you in any of the software mentioned on how you can build if you want to go past some of these a little bit more basic 3D modeling um, courses and classes and training options, um, Jody will 100% geek out with you. And um, she, you know, she's a great person to bring you to the next level. And as Sonia's mentioned, she has taken courses um, with Jody to bring herself to that next level. So. I just want to bring Jackie into this. So maybe Jackie can go ahead and do like a summary of all of this so that- I actually have wrap up questions that I didn't get oh. to ask during this. So, okay, so one of them, um, we were mentioning um, this, I mean, I kind of know these answers, but I have to ask them for everybody else, right? Who might not know. Um, for things like V-Ray and Onscape and Twin Motion, these names that are coming out of nowhere, right? That we're, that we use with, SketchUp and Chief Architect this, or can they be used alone? No. 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 So it's all of those, all of those, the rendering programs of V-Ray, Twin Motion, Thea, um, Enscape, Enscape, Corona, Corona um, they are all what you call a rendering engine. And they require geometry to be either imported or used with it. So, so they, you have to, yeah, so you have to create your some. space. And what those systems right. do is they focus on the lighting, creating lighting, um, texturing materials, um, setting up camera angles. So you have to have your room built first in whatever program you're using. And then those, those rendering programs are an exterior element that you apply to something that's already been built. And they all function differently. They all have different perks, and some are more complicated than others. Um, and some, some are only more, work with certain programs, right? Some only work with certain programs. Um, but it, for most of it, you have to have your geometry built in one of the other programs to start. Um, and then I already forgot my other question. So <laughs> that being said, um, yeah. Shameless promotion, uh, virtualdesignmentor.com. Guys, everybody here is a mentor on some type of software, some kind of training. You can do one-on-ones. There's courses available, um, everything that you could need. That We also, another little plug here, we also have library, catalog libraries available, sorry, catalogs <laughs> available for your libraries in Chief Architect um, available for sale from some of the models that Jody and Sonia have created. Um, and Kelly has post, I don't know the words for I it I formatted them in Chief formatted Architect them. and they are <laughs> applicable in Chief Architect and Home Designer Pro. So if you're an interior designer who's been complaining that you're not getting good furniture or lighting or any of those sorts of things, we do have some catalogs and um, they, and I can tell you, Sonia has a ton more and, um, we I've got are... actually a whole sofa set that I put together for you, Kelly, that I haven't. Oh, I can. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you guys yeah. can also reach out. Sorry about my cat. If you have any specific <laughs> models available, we can sell them as well, even individual. Yeah. So. And that's what I love to do is the modeling is what I love to do. So if you're looking for models where you want a custom, something custom that you want to be able to show your clients or whatever. Um, you know, that's my, that's my favorite thing to do is model that furniture. So, and if you are watching this, um, what, after we, I guess, hang up, isn't quite the term, but whatever, um, feel free to comment below, reach out to any of us, whether it's on Facebook via email or virtual design mentor, we will be able to connect with you there. Um, if you are, this is the last same shameless plug, but I have to put it out there. If you are a virtual design mentor or anybody who provides um, services to interior designers and work with them on a virtual basis, please check out liaisforinteriordesign.com. It is a directory that we are putting together for interior designers to connect them with industry partners. And when I say anybody that you can be a bookkeeper, you can be a, um, who else? You can be social a social media manager, specialist, a social media. Yeah. 
yeah, a website designer, you can be Jody and just build 3D models for people. Like you can be anything. And um, we have um, now over a hundred designers um, uh, listed Yay. or not listed, but have joined the directory. And um, the sooner you join, the better, because we still have our um, Facebook beta launch offering for 25 percent off of the lifetime of your subscription, whatever one you choose to start out with. So again, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, but we are here to help you. So thank you so much, ladies, for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Fun. Okay. All righty. I hope you guys all have a great weekend. I am celebrating a second birthday tonight. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Uh, I gotta go clean my house so I'll talk to you all later <laughs> bye. Right, bye bye